beginning with verse 8. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice, rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of the position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right on the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with one another. That is the reading of the scripture. Thank you, Dan. Well, good morning, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's especially good to see some faces that we haven't gotten to see for a while. It's so good to see the sanctuary continuing to fill with God's people, with his children. You know, uh, my girlfriend has this saying. Her name is Brooke, and she likes to say, just because you know better doesn't mean that you do better. For the next three weeks, we're going to be going through a sermon series that is, is not going to be foreign to most of you. We have amongst us some lifelong card-carrying Methodists, and I'm sure that you can help me recite the three simple rules. Rule number one is what? Do no harm. Rule number two, do all the good that you can do. And rule number three, stay in love with God. My goal over the next three weeks is to not offer you any life-shattering, earth-altering theological knowledge, but simply to remind you of things that we already know. Because once again, just because we know better doesn't mean that we do better. Do any of you have someone in your life that you would consider to be a list person? They like to make lists. Mike likes to make lists. Oh, the queen. That's lists of things for you to do, right, Mike? That's right. That's right. <laughs> we all have these people in our lives that like to make lists. Every once in a while, I try to make a list because I know that these lists are exceptionally beneficial. Lists can help remind us of the things that we need to get done. They give us a sense of accomplishment when we get to mark it off the list. A list helps keep you on track. Some of you know that I love to cook. I love to have meal ideas in my mind, and I just love to go to the grocery store and randomly buy things. Well, you know what works for a lot better is a grocery list, right? Because inevitably, I get home and I go, oh, forgot that, forgot this. And I actually probably spend an extra like hour at the store every time I go just because I wander around because I love the grocery store. Lists, they're such an important and impactful thing in our life and they help us stay on track so well. The Apostle Paul is a list guy. The Apostle Paul wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. And in there, he gives us all sorts of lists. 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter list. It says, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, so on and so on and so on. Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit list. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. You get the idea. Ephesians 6, the armor of God list. Romans chapter 12, the do not harm list. The book of Romans was written according to scholars, to a church in the capital city of the Roman Empire that had never really been under the specific direction of any of the apostles. 
The apostles were those who followed Jesus Christ directly, who had human interaction with him, who were taught by him. And yet this Roman church had sprang up without any guidance from the people who knew the guy who started the whole thing, Jesus Christ. And so Paul's writing to them a letter, a bit of an instruction manual on how to do the things that Christians should do. In our Bibles, this section of Scripture has a header. Most of our Bibles have this. The original text wouldn't have had this. But the Scripture that Dan read for us this morning is marked in my Bible as the marks of a true Christian. So Paul starts off, said, let your love be genuine is the way that some of the versions say it. This word genuine is translated from an original word in the Greek that is taken from the root word of the same word that we get the word hypocrite for. In their day, a hypocrite was actually an actor, somebody who wore a face mask. Now, a little bit different than the ones that we have to wear today, right? By the way, selfish plug, I've got my, my, my Fabian face mask. If you want to get one of those, you can see Miss Darlene or Miss Joanne. They can hook you up with one of these. It's free advertising for your church. I wear it around the Summit Grill all the time, and people are, don't know what to think, but it's wonderful. But this word says, let your love be genuine. What he, Paul is saying is to make sure that your love is authentic. To make sure that you're not putting on a mask and showing outward love to people, but not really having it in your heart. Let your love be genuine. So he starts this list off by saying, let your love be genuine. I find it interesting that this word hypocrite that was used to portray an actor in the original Greek is a word that is very often, unfortunately, associated with us as Christians. We say one thing, but then we do another. Hypocrite. It's got this very negative connotation, and unfortunately, many of us have fallen into that trap of hypocrisy. But let's get back on track. Paul says to the list, let your love be genuine. That's how we start. From there, he starts off. He says, abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Okay, Paul? Well, how do we know what's evil? How do we know what's good? Love one another with brotherly affection. Okay, that sounds nice, but sometimes I don't love my brothers and my sisters the way that I should. Outdo one another in showing honor. Don't just honor people, but outdo each other. Don't be slothful in zeal, but be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. What does that mean? Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Okay, Paul, you first. Paul gives us this list, this stuff. I don't know about you, but when I read this list, it gets a little heavy. There's a lot of things there. I'm supposed to be this way. If I'm supposed to have the marks of a Christian, I got to live in this way. Bless those who persecute you. No thanks. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Okay, I can do that one. Weep with those who weep. I, I can figure that out. Live in harmony with one another. Mm. Don't be haughty but associate with the lonely. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil. You know, sometimes we look at these lists of Paul and they get deeper and they get deeper and we just kind of tune out. And we go, okay, you know what? I, I don't know that I can do all that stuff, so I'm just, I'm just going to try to live the best way I can live. I'm going to try to be as nice to people as I can be and I'm just, we're going to get on with the Christian life. I don't know that I can do all this stuff. But what if instead of looking at this list of things that, that we must accomplish, we look at the one who gives us the strength to accomplish them? Paul used this phrase in the middle of all this that said, be fervent in spirit. We said that we need to be fervent in spirit means that, that we get the power from the Holy Spirit to do these things. God tells us, or this first rule says, do not harm. Well, how in the world are we supposed to do that? Can you imagine if we brought this, this thought of do not harm into every piece of our life, into our driving? I don't know about you guys, but mm, driving gets me a little bit perturbed. How about if we brought this thing of do no harm into our social media? Before we hit post or before we hit share, we really thought about what is it that we're sharing? Well, it's my opinion, okay. Is that opinion going to harm 
somebody else? What if we brought this into our news media? Do no harm. What if we brought it into our jobs? What if we brought do no harm into every aspect of our life? It sounds really simple, right? Everything that we learned, we learned in kindergarten. I know that was a long time ago for some of you. But listen, everything, it's easy, right? Do no harm. It's not easy. So instead of focusing on all of the things, the list that Paul gives us, what if we focused on the one who gave us the list? I have right here this a water bottle. Probably wasn't made in America, but I found an American flag sticker, so I put it on there. This is us as, as the Fabian Church family. Now what happens, by the way, I'm not spilling on your carpet, our carpet. I got a little bucket over here, so it'll be all right. What happens when pressure comes into our life? This is us. What happens when pressure comes in? What's in the water bottle is what comes out of the water bottle, right? So that begs the question, what are we putting into our water bottle? What if we put a whole lot of news into our water bottle? What comes out of our water bottle? Green news. You can't see that, but it's green, I promise. Okay. What if you put a whole lot of, mm, I don't know, fear into your water bottle? That looks good, doesn't it? What comes out? More fear. What if you put, I don't know, what's something you guys put into your water bottles? What's something you put into yourself on a daily basis? Shout it out. Hmm? Doubt. Hmm. Starting to get a little cloudy, isn't it? What goes in to our water bottle continues to come out of our water bottle. That doesn't look real good. Now, what if I started over with water? And what if this water represents Jesus Christ, our eternal water? And every time something comes into our lives, it puts pressure on. What comes out is more water. You see, guys, we cannot do what God has asked us to do without first filling ourselves with him. If we're filling ourselves with doubt, with fear, with news, with you name it, that's what's going to come out. Now, you can fill yourself with family. That's a good thing, right? You can feel, fill yourself with fellowship. That's a good thing, right? That's what's going to come out. But have you ever noticed when you fill yourself with those negative things, you get an appetite for those negative things even when you don't want it? We got some people that are here with us today because they're sick and tired of filling themselves with loneliness. And so they said, you know what? I'm getting out. I got to go fill myself with church family. I got to go fill myself with the Holy Spirit. You see, guys, this list that Paul gives us to do no harm, to, to do good to those who curse you, guys, we can't do it. I can't do it. But if I continue to fill myself with the things of the Holy Spirit, the things of Christ-like community, if I sit down every day and spend time in prayer, if I sit down every day and spend time in the Word of God, that's what's going to come out. So you're right, I, I can't do no harm. I can't do that. I can't fulfill that list that Paul gives us. But what I can do is I continue to fill myself with the things that I know God has asked me to fill myself with. If I fill myself with him, he is what's going to come out. So when that guy cuts me off in traffic, oh well, maybe he's in a hurry. Maybe he's got to get somewhere that's really important to him. When I see somebody at the grocery store that's not wearing a mask, I don't know, maybe they've got a breathing conditioner, maybe they've got a perfectly good reason, but maybe not, I don't know, but either way, is it affecting me? I'm wearing my mask. This whole mask wearing thing is really kind of the epitome of do no harm, right? Why do we wear them? To protect others from us. So, our challenge this morning 
is to do no harm. Again, you guys know this. It's just a reminder. But let me challenge you. If you really want to do no harm, if you really want to do the things that God has called you to do in living out your faith and being loved to those around you, then you can't do it by yourself. You could be the nicest person in the world, and every once in a while, you're going to get a little perturbed. What goes in is what comes out. The other cool thing about this is this is like an appetite. Have you ever noticed that when you start eating really healthy, when you start exercising, you, you just want to do that a little bit more and a little bit more? Or just the opposite. Maybe you eat really, really well, and you stop at McDonald's and get you a cheeseburger on the way home. And then the next day you think, oh, well, that wasn't so bad. I'll just have another one. And before you know it, you're eating McDonald's cheeseburgers all the time. Appetites grow. Maybe you don't have an appetite for reading your Bible right now. Just start doing it. I bet you'll gain that appetite. Maybe you don't have an appetite for spending some purposeful time in prayer. Start doing it. I bet you'll start to get an appetite for it. If you want the things to come out of you to be that of do no harm, you have to put in the things of Jesus Christ because it's only in his power that we can truly do no harm. So look, again, nothing special these next couple weeks. I'm not going to give you anything crazy. I'm not going to give you anything you probably don't know. But maybe it's just a reminder that you need, that especially during this time, man, we got pressure. We got pressure coming from every side on us. Are we going to be like Jesus Christ? Or are we going to be like those hypocrites that when pressure comes on, mm, not so sure on the color of that water that's coming out. So again this morning, when pressure comes into your life, what's going to come out? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you that, we thank you for this challenge. God, because we know that we can't do it. I can't do it. So God, I thank you that you've given us your word. Father, I thank you that you have given us the power of prayer. And so God, I ask that we would fill ourselves with the things that you have taught us to fill ourselves with. Father, with prayer, with community with you, with community with our brothers and sisters, with your word. Father, be with us now as we continue on in worship, as we remember the sacrifice of our Son, Jesus Christ, as he died on the cross. God, we thank you for the sacraments of Holy Communion. And God, we pray that you would prepare our hearts and our minds to accept the gift that you have given us. As we continue in prayer, Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent, of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. The proof of that is God's love. Jesus, Father, you are welcome, or you welcome all to your table. The successful and the outcast, and there made them equal at one with you in the presence of God. And now you call us in the same unity and equality to take bread and drink juice as your body and blood, the source of life for the world. Enable us to put aside both pride and false humility and share with the simplicity and gratitude in the feast which opens us, opens us up to the kingdom of your Father. Amen. Like Jesus' table, our table is open to anyone. We ask only that you come to communion this morning, that you would come with an open heart, turning away from sin and repentance towards Jesus. Communion is going to look a little different this morning, so I'm going to do a little another object lesson. wasn't planning on all these, but we have this morning for you a pre-done communion, a little wafer and juice to make sure that we are protecting all of you today. It's a little delicate, but there's two tabs here. One up top, which you will pull and take out your wafer. And then the other, like a little coffee creamer, pull that and you will take your juice. doesn't matter what the median is that we use. 
This is the body of Christ that is broken for you and the blood that is sacrificed for you. Mike, our usher, will release you by rose, and we have up here for you our communion. Feel free to take your communion, kneel at the altars, and have some Holy Spirit fellowship time with our Father. And then just circle around back and come back to your rows. Father, we thank you for this remembrance of your body that has been broken for us, this blood that has been shed for us. Father, we pray that you would fill us with who you are, 
so that what comes out of us when life comes our way is that of your son. Father, that we may do no harm to those around us. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another. Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Our closing chorus is going now in peace. Amen. 